We've all wondered if an email or message we've received is a fake, just the start of a plot to attack our device. This email looks like it was sent by our producer, but it was actually faked using an email spoofer. The link on the mail redirects the receiver to a fake website, where you might be asked to key in private details. Cybersecurity firm Akamai says there is one thing you can do. Wait until you get to your computer to have a look at that email. Because this is what happens when you have an email on the mobile phone because of the size. You don't get to see the email address of the sender. You have to take the effort to go and really click and have a look more carefully. And sometimes you, people can impersonate the website or the email address on that perspective and you'll just click thinking this is a valid uh, request. Also fake, these messages that look like they've been sent from banks or credit card companies or even government organizations. They even arrive in the same thread as previous messages. Cybersecurity company Privacy Ninja deliberately sent these messages to show how easy it can be for hackers to trick mobile users by spoofing SMSs. How does SMS spoofing work? So it's basically even systems and services online that malicious actors or hackers can change or tweak the sender ID. So instead of showing a country code and a eight or nine digit mobile number, they can change it to anything they want. Example, the bank's name. So when the mobile device receives such uh, messages, right, and they check the sender ID, oh, there's already an existing SMS thread in the phone, that message automatically goes into the same thread. And that's why people are tricked, because they believe right, that that uh, message comes from the originating sender, the real sender. These are not isolated incidents. It's estimated that more than 30% of global mobile users were exposed to such mobile phishing attacks last year, the highest rate ever. Besides SMSs and emails, phishing attacks also took place on messaging platforms, social media and voice calls. I have to say that uh, the mobile has been and still is the frontier of the cybersecurity, not only because it's following a specific individual for the longest time of the day, but also it start, it start to gather uh, more and more aspects of a, a specific individual, uh, where you work, what kind of uh, financial assets do you have, where do you work, and increasingly as the uh, online uh, working environment gets uh, be, uh, become popular, there are a lot of corporate assets or remote access uh, also available on the mobile side. Here's the dilemma many of us face. We use our mobiles more and more for both work and personal purposes. But we aren't careful enough in the way we use our mobiles. And the attackers are aware of this. this so it starts with the lack of, uh, of taking security seriously when it comes to mobile phones. According to Akamai, there's been a 40% jump in mobile attacks since the start of the pandemic. The financial losses from mobile phishing attacks soared nearly 80% in 2022 from the year before. Hybrid working has made mobile phones more lucrative targets for hackers. It's really worth the effort to attack somebody just to attack a low value target, meaning is your data or personal information has little value to exploit. But now as mobile devices are used as a mean to work and to communicate with the corporate environment, then you could use that mobile device to infiltrate uh, a secure corporate environment and use that as a platform of attack to like ransomware or uh, data breaches because then the data becomes is far more valuable than uh, the personal user uh, on the mobile phone. The most common way hackers infiltrate mobile phones is through third-party apps, which might masquerade as popular games or utilities. Some could be bundled with malware. So what's trending right now is also, example, a topic called ChatGPT, which is an AI-based uh, generated content right, application. And with that, when people search for it on the app stores, be it Apple Store or Google Play, you'll be more inclined to click the top few, right? Ease of access, you don't want to scroll through too many screens. Having said that, if you download an app that's masking as a chat GPT app, but it's not, right, it may have access to other parts of your phone, right, be communicating with other applications, or even accessing your images and messages folder. 
and be directing you to where it wants you to as you use the app. It's also better to think twice about using public Wi-Fi when working remotely. Public Wi-Fi, I would say, is a very big no-no. Okay, if you are even at uh, Starbucks or any cafe and get a free Wi-Fi, if you trust the SSID or the network itself, you may want to connect, but please make sure you are still using a VPN on your device. And I will always say, don't do banking transactions and don't log into sensitive apps on be it your laptop or your mobile device. Okay, otherwise, nowadays, it's so affordable to have uh, data mobile plans. So everyone should be using their hotspot plus VPN as best practices. Besides using a virtual private network or VPN, if you need to use public Wi-Fi, you can install security tools or apps on your phone to periodically scan for hacks and update your operating system whenever there is a security patch. You can also password protect your SIM card in the event you lose your phone. The SIM card is the Achilles heel of the entire mobile phone defense. Most of the people, they don't even know that SIM card can be protected by a PIN code. Imagine your phone is lost and the, uh, whoever pick up your phone, they can just take out your SIM card. There's no lock there, right? And they can just, uh, just uh, insert the SIM card and try to understand what is the phone number and try a lot of, for example, uh, password recovery by SMS. That will generate a lot of uh, hostile account, uh, account takeovers. So yeah, that is the final piece of the puzzle. Hybrid work is here to stay. And with that, increasingly blurred lines between the usage of smartphones for work and pleasure. While users have a responsibility, experts say companies and app developers have to play a bigger role in ensuring our smartphones stay secure. Perhaps if you have to come that, you really have to distrust your phone and change the way you actually uh, use your mobile <laughs> communication. But I think there's no changing, you know, the, the genie is out of the bottle now. As a lot of the corporation today are still kind of catching up in securing the communication between the mobile devices and the corporate network environment and the type of application that are being used. And I think for the next 2023 and beyond, uh, I think unless those investments are being done, uh, we will see an increase uh, both in the numbers, but also in the impact of attacks being done using mobile platforms.